This presentation is intended for the dental assisting student. The topic is quality assurance in dental radiography. What is quality assurance? It's the planning, implementation, and evaluation of procedures used to produce our number one goal, maximum diagnostic quality images with minimum exposure to the patient and the radiographer. So how is this accomplished? We can accomplish this by administrative procedures, certainly the competency of the radiographer, quality control, control tests for our equipment and armamentarium, and a radiation protection program. Let's look at administrative procedures. So one aspect is to develop a needs assessment where your staff uh, or the dental staff can meet either monthly or quarterly to determine what do we need to do in order to have high quality diagnostic images and work within the principle of ALARA as low as reasonably achievable when utilizing dental x-rays. So hopefully your staff is going to volunteer and someone will keep the records or somebody will take care of the equipment, maybe go out and uh, get additional training and come back and train the staff, and then someone to be in charge of all of these areas. It should be written down. Uh, so you have a written plan and I've already talked about the various responsibilities and who would be willing to be in charge. It's important that you monitor and maintain and actually have a schedule written down which would be a log and we have a little photograph over here um, so that you're keeping track of what you're doing to have a high quality uh, radiographic uh, treatment for your patient or uh, diagnostic aids, I should say, for your patient. And most states do have a radiological division. Sometimes it's part of public health. Uh, your equipment should be registered with the state or your county. You need to check in your um, area and see what the regulations are, but they also want to see information in writing um, so that there's some proof that you're actually working to uh, create minimum exposure. And you should have a periodic review of all of these areas that you are going to implement, maintain in order to have a quality uh, x-ray area in your dental practice. Certainly we want competency of the dental radiographer which will achieve ALARA as, as low as reasonably achievable for all, for the patient and for the dental assistant or the dental health care worker. We can um, achieve competency by having really good technique, right, and avoid retakes. Uh, if we have errors, we want to be able to recognize them and certainly correct for those errors. And it's important to maintain your education in dental radiography, whether that's through um, videos on the internet, uh, perhaps your local dental assistance society, uh, offers continuing education. Uh, many of the dental supply companies also have uh, education for the staff. So it's important to keep current in dental radiography practices. Also, having quality control tests will uh, ensure diagnostic quality images. So there are a series of tests that you can perform. Uh, for your x-ray unit function, for your digital sensor function and your computer software. Uh, if you're still using film, I'm sorry, uh, that your film is fresh, it's not expired, uh, and of course you need a processor of some sort, whether it is a um, 
automatic processor or if you're still using a dip tank, uh, you want to make sure that the dark room is in good condition and the chemicals that you would use for film processing. Let's look at the dental x-ray machine. So monitoring here would be, um, is it registered with your state if that's required or your county? And has it been inspected by a health physicist? So they come with little machines to make sure that your x-ray units are um, have the proper output of radiation. Um, uh, and also you can, um, We'll look at it in a moment, um, make sure that there's no uh, PID drifting, and we'll look at that in just a moment. Something else that a uh, inspector might look for would be to have a control or a reference film. So you want to have a film, if you're still using film, to make sure that the contrast, the density is uh, of diagnostic quality. You can achieve this by using a little device that's called a step wedge. And so this is made out of very metal and there's varying thicknesses. So you put it on top of a film and you expose the, um, the film with the little step wedge on top. And you can see when it's developed that you actually have a, um, a image of contrast here. And so that's the varying degrees of white, uh, shades of white and gray and black. And you can actually make your own step wedge with either um, lead foil or even with a little object on top. You can put a penny on top of a film and actually take an image there. So that's what a step wedge is, a little device to help with um, making or obtaining a reference or a control film and it shows the contrast and you can see that you want to date this film um, if you have a number of dental x-ray units you should have a control or a reference film for each one and um, you want to make sure that you do this uh, periodically You want to check for tube head stability. So your tube head shouldn't be drifting, like this assistant saying, this tube head keeps moving. One assistant says, I'll hold it for you. No, no one else should be in the room when the x-ray unit is exposing, and your patient shouldn't be holding it either. So you want to make sure uh, that uh, you can call a repair man, uh, or excuse me, person, dental repair person, uh, to come and check and make sure that the arm is in good working order and that you don't have uh, PID drift. Also, uh, it's good for safety to have it in a non-operative position. I just found this picture on the internet. You can see this x-ray head just kind of hanging out here. Uh, you can have an accident uh, or uh, just have undue stress on the arm of the uh, tube head. If you're using a uh, film, you want to make sure that your processing room, your dark room, that you don't have any light leaks because that would lead to a black film. Uh, and that uh, we'll look at chemicals uh, in just a moment. If you're using a daylight loader or, or with uh, an automatic processor, excuse me, an automatic processor, you want to make sure that you maintain it properly. This just happens to be an AT2000, but there is weekly maintenance in cleaning the racks and the rollers and uh, changing the solutions. It's good to keep a log um, of that information as well. Uh, make sure that you don't lean on the daylight loader because you can actually, there's, it's a, uh, you know, the loader attaches onto the main processor. And so if you're leaning on it, you can actually cause a light leak. Uh, also make sure that the cuff assembly isn't torn, that that's in good shape. 
and um, for proper operation whenever you turn on your automatic processor uh, you want to run a clean sheet of or a cleaning sheet of some sort and this would allow you to see do you have any black specks or marks on the sheet that would indicate you need to clean the rollers and possibly change the solutions Speaking of the processing solutions, you want to make sure that they're not expired, that your um, processor is getting regular replenishment, replenishment, excuse me. Uh, you want to make sure that your processing solutions or chemical solutions have um, are rather clear in color. Sometimes your developer um, will uh, have a slight yellow tinge which is okay, but you don't want it to be brown or black or really dark yellow. Um, they should also, I mean, the chemicals have a strong smell, strong odor, uh, but they shouldn't smell um, like sulfur or rotten eggs or anything like that. If you're using film, uh, you want to make sure that your film uh, has not expired, that it's stored outside of the exposing room, uh, possibly in a lead lined box or a drawer, and that it is out of heat and moisture. If you're still using film, you want to make sure your view boxes are in good working order so you don't have to be holding this film up to the ceiling lights. If you're using a digital system, you want to make sure that your sensors are in good shape, that your cords, uh, you want to be very careful, <clears throat> pardon me, with sensor cords, um, that they're not bent, uh, that when you store them, they're not all curled up. Uh, make sure that your programs are up to date, and the uh, same thing for indirect digital systems, the phosphor plates, you want to make sure that they're not scratched um, um, or bent and that your software and your scanner is in good working order. Radiation Protection and Safety Program. Uh, you want to look at your state to see if there is a state code of regulation that defines safety protocols. Uh, uh, you also want to uh, check with the public health uh, radiological department for any regulations that they may have uh, in your county. Um, and make sure that your x-ray units are registered within your state or county and that you have a written plan for safety, um, any training, your quality assurance, your quality control tests uh, can be all be included in your written plan. So let's review. Quality assurance in our procedures to identify radiography problems and corrections needed to achieve those quality diagnostic images and ALARA for all. You want to um, develop some quality control tests so that you uh, have proper functioning of equipment and proper technique and um, proper armamentarium. You should have a radiation protection program uh, which will be mandated possibly by your state and also assign uh, responsibilities, but anyone who is working with the radiographic or processing equipment is really responsible for um, the result, which we're looking for those diagnostic quality images. And you also should check with your state regarding regulations for certification or licensure for dental radiation. I thank you very much for listening and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and that you've learned something. Thank you.